Welcome back to UGC Net English class. The topic of our last lecture was the biography of William Shakespeare. Today we have our topic, a Middle English poem written by Geoffrey Chaucer, titled "The Book of the Duchess." The Book of the Duchess. The Book of the Duchess was written in between. Thirteen sixty-eight to thirteen seventy-two, one thousand three hundred sixty-eight to one thousand three hundred seventy-two, written by Geoffrey Chaucer, born in one thousand three hundred forty or forty-five to one thousand four hundred. On other titles of the poems, we can say call the poem as the Book of the Duchess, also the Dream of Chaucer. or the death of blanche the death of blanche the dream of chaucer or the book of the duchess as we said the work was composed in between 1368 to 1372 but uh, not published until 1532 So the work was published in fifteen thirty-two by William Tyon. William Tyon included this work in his collection of works. It is a long narrative poem, an elegy, and also a eulogy. An elegy we we know elegy means a song mourning the death of someone, and a eulogy means. praise uh, praising someone a poem praising someone basically the poem was a commissioned piece that means a poem written to commemorate duchess blanche of lancaster first wife of john of gaunt who was the fourth son of king edward 3 so we know that uh, john of gaunt was chaucer's Patron, Joseph's patron, was John of Gaunt. So John of Gaunt was the son, the fourth son of King Edward III. So John of Gaunt's wife was Blanche of Lancaster. Blanche of Lancaster, also called the Duchess Blanche. So when she passed away, John of Gaunt demanded Joseph to write a. poem commemorating his first wife blanche of lancaster john of gaunt was a patron and at some point a brother in law to chaucer uh, blanche the blanche of lancaster died in 1368 probably from the plague at the age of 26 and a john of gaunt mourned her for the rest of his life but he remarried so blanche was his first wife so when she died of plague john of gaunt mourned her death the book of duchess is thought to have been composed on the second anniversary of her death and as per john of gaunt's uh, you know demand or instruction chaucer composed this poem in order to remember the blanche of lancaster let's see how the poem begins i wonder greatly by this day's light how i still live for day and night the sleep i gain is well nigh not I have so many an idle thought. So remember the beginning line of the poem, the book of the Duchess. It is important to remember the lines. So remember, I wonder greatly by this day's light how I still live for day and night. The sleep I gain is well nigh not. I have so many an idle thought.
Now let's analyze the main themes of the work, the poem, the book of the Duchess. The main themes include the life of the Duchess as an allegory of ideal womanhood. So it is an allegory. That means it gives a, a valuable, you know, idea or a message about an ideal womanhood. What is the idea of an ideal womanhood? Then it also talks about romantic love. And then the brevity of happiness in love on earth. Happiness is very short. So these are the main themes of the work. The life of the Duchess is an allegory of ideal womanhood. Romantic love. The brevity of happiness in love on earth. The poem is written in Middle English. As we know, Chaucer is a Middle English writer. Another poem has total 1,334 lines. 1,334 lines long poem. This is a very long poem. Now let's uh, analyze the structural uh, you know, specialities of the composition of the poem. Uh, it was composed in of two syllabic rhyming couplets written in a syllabic form. It's also adapted from the French style of poetry called French octosyllabic verse. Which means there are eight syllables in a line and every two lines or couplets rhyme. So, we know that the Book of the Duchess belongs to his first period of writing. We had a, divided his poetic career into three periods. I think you remember which were the three periods. The three periods of Chaucer's poetic career, the French period, the Italian period and the English period. So it was composed during the French period. That means till 1372. Not exactly, just we try to, you know, categorize. So when we say the French period, we can see the works like uh, the Book of the Duchess and also translation work, Guillaume de Lauris and Jean de Moon's work, the Romance of the Rose, he also translated. So he was fascinated by the French poetry during this time. So he used the French style of writing. That means octosyllabic rhyming couplets. Which means there are eight syllables in a line and every couplet rhyme. Every two lines will be rhyming. So just see how the beginning of the lines rhyme. I wonder greatly what is this light. How I still live for day and night. So the last verse you see, light, night. So the next two lines you see, not, thought. So rhyming every two lines rhyme. And I've written in first person narrator. In first person narrator's point of view. He may be a poet, I mean the poet him, uh, himself, Chaucer himself appears as a person in the poem or just a poet we can say. And it was the earliest of Chaucer's major poems. Uh, only two works you know, preceded the Book of the Ditches. These two works were A Prayer to Virgin ABC and also as we said the translation of the Roman of the Rose or the Roman de la Rose. So we can say the Book of the Duchess was his third work, we can say. Then there is a question, how is it identified as a poem about the Duchess Blanche, the Duchess Blanche of Lancaster? Especially the name of the deceased woman, I mean the name of the dead woman on the poem, is Lady White. 
So in the poem, the woman, a woman dies, and her name is Lady White. So Blanche, and uh, I mean Blanche, the name Blanche means white. So he was here playing on the word Lady White. Indirectly, it is such as the ditches of Blanche. And there are other evidences, you know, throughout the poem we can get ideas that this poem is about the Duchess of Blanche and also about his patron, John of Gaunt. So other evidences you see. At the end of the poem, there is a reference to a long castle. Long castle he mentions, which may suggest Lancaster. There is another reference to a rich hill because John of Gaunt was Earl of Richmond. So John of Gaunt's name was another position was the he was an also an Earl of Richmond. So Mond here means hill. So rich hill means Richmond. This John of Gaunt's another name was, another position was, he was also an Earl of Richmond. And one more evidence is there to suggest that it was about John of Gaunt and his wife, first wife, the Duchess of Blanche, because the narrator also swears by the name of St. John. St. John was the Name of John of Gaunt's patron saint. So John of Gaunt's, you know, patron saint was Saint John. So that name also gets mentioned in the poem. So these all indicate that the poem was basically a poem written by Chaucer as per the command of John of Gaunt in order to mount the Death of his first wife, the Duchess of Blanche. Another poem is written in dream vision form. Dream vision form. Uh, this also he has taken from French style of poetry. As we said, his first period, French period. He was very much, you know, interested towards French style of poetry. So he used the French style in, uh, that was prevalent in the narration of poetry. So, dream vision form he uses here. It was a branch made a popular body, highly influential 13th century French poem of courtly love, the Roman de la Rose. So, the Roman de la Rose also is written in the same, you know, style of dream vision. So, he uses that style. So, what is a dream vision? Uh, usually in a dream vision poem, a narrator will relate some problem he is experiencing and then he would fall asleep. So uh, with a problem, a person will be upset and he will then fall asleep. Then he would have a dream which will suggest a solution to the problem. So in his dream, he will see a, you know the things related to his problem and then he will get to his solution. So after this, he will, you know, wake up and are feeling easy and okay. So when he wakes up, he has his solution to the problem. So he is happy. Uh, but the Chaucer, uh, you know, deviates from this form. Chaucer uh, changes the original French style to, uh, you know, his own, I mean, uh, interest. He changes it a little bit. What is the change he made? Uh, Chaucer's poem deviates from this form in that the narrator never reaches a solution to his problem through the dream. So here, Chaucer as a narrator of the poem never comes to a conclusion, you know, or a solution to the problem. He just wakes up and the poem really ends there. So when the poem ends simply with him telling us, he woke up and draw the dream down. So he woke up from his, uh, you know, sleep and also from his dream and he felt 
they needed to write down the poem. That's all. The poem ends the, there is no solution. So remember, it is written in dream vision style, which is originally from the French style of writing poetry. Now let's uh, analyze the summary of the poem. So we know that the poet is going to sleep. So let's see. The poet was reading Ovid's Metamorphosis. So the first part is the poet's reading of Ovid's Metamorphosis. And the second part will be the poet falling asleep and the dreams. If the poet's sleep would be the second part. So let's analyze the first part. In the beginning of the poem, the sleepless poet who has suffered from an unexplained sickness, problem of undecated love for eight years, and he lies in his bed reading a book. That book is Ovid's Metamorphosis. So remember, this is very, very important. Which book he was reading when he was lying on his bed? Ovid's Metamorphosis. So the poet was lying on his bed reading Ovid's Metamorphosis because he was sad. Basically, his love, eight years love, is not requited by the woman. The woman has not accepted his love for eight years and so because of this reason he is sad. And the book of its metamorphosis, that is we know that it is a metamorphosis is a collection of stories. And one story was CX and Alzayani. CX and Alzayani. ZX was a king and uh, Alsani was a queen. So they were a couple, a happy couple, okay, a king and a queen. And uh, one story in the Metamorphosis is about them. So the story tells how ZX lost his life at the sea and how Alsani, his wife, mourned his absence. So they were a happy couple, but uh, they once, you know, they had anchored. God Zeus, I mean God of the sky, the sky God Zeus, they anchored Zeus. Because especially Alsani used to call her husband as Zeus, that means God's name. So that really angered the God because it was God's name. Zeus, God is Zeus, God of the sky. So the husband, I mean the king Zeus, was, uh, you know, sharing the same name. When they are, uh, and they, his wife Alsani sometimes called him using God's name. So God really got angry and he cursed the husband, I mean the king Zeus. So the couple had anchored God Zeus. That means God of the sky. So, while CX was at the sea, the God threw a thunderbolt at his ship. So, God Zeus threw a thunderbolt and thus the husband, I mean the king CX, dies. So, unsure of his fate, the queen, the queen, Alsaini prays to the goddess Juno, goddess Juno is the goddess of marriage, to send her a dream vision. So wife Alsaini was really upset and she didn't know what really happened to her husband. So she wanted an answer to the question. So she prayed to the god of marriage, I mean the goddess of marriage Juno. So Juno provides her a dream vision. So Juno sends a messenger to Morpheus, a god associated with sleep and dream. So Juno, through the person, through another god, 
Morpheus. Morpheus is the god of sleep and the dream. The dream god Morpheus conveys to Alzane the message sent by Juno. Because Alzane wanted an answer to the question what happened to her husband. So goddess Juno sends a messenger to bring the body of CX with a message to Alcyne. So when Morpheus, I mean the messenger, finds the drowned king CX and then he takes him to Alcyne three hours before dawn. So in her dream, everything happens in her dream. So Alcyne sees the messenger Morpheus coming with her husband's body and then her husband starts to talk to the wife. So the deceased CX, I mean the king, the dead king CX instructs his wife Alfani to bury him and to seize her sorrow. So the husband, dead husband in Alfani's dream tells her to stop her sorrow and give him proper burial and when Alsani opens her eyes CX is gone so when Alsani opens her eyes her husband is no longer there and the messenger also was not there so she had you know she had a dream she understands Alsani threw herself into the sea in her grief. So because of her, you know, her unbearable sorrow over the death of her husband, what she does, she also wants to drown herself in the sea. So she goes to commit suicide. So she also commits suicide. And seeing everything, you know, seeing all this, the gods, they feel pity. So out of compassion, the gods changed them both into common kingfishes. So the gods, you know, blessed them to become kingfishes, to live in another form, in the form of a bird. So the king, CX and the wife, his queen, Alfani, they turned out to be kingfishes. So this is the first part of the poem, the book of the Duchess. So remember, the first part is the poet going to, you know, his bed and reads Ovid's Metamorphosis. And he reads the story of CX and Alzani. And the second part is the poet's sleep. So now after re re reading the story, he goes to sleep or he falls asleep. Now the poet stops relaying the story of Zayx and Alsani and reflects there. He wished that he had a god such as Juno or Morpheus so that he could sleep like Alsani. Now the poet, you know, he at least wants to sleep. So he feels that he if he had a goddess, you know, Juno, and uh, a god as Morpheus, he could, you know, dream. At least in his dream, he could satisfy his unrequited love. He feels so. And he then describes the lavish bed he would give to Morpheus should the god discover his location. So he feels that if uh, Morpheus comes in my dream, I will treat him in a very good manner, he thinks he would give the God his, you know, lavish, his best bed. So lost in the book and his thoughts, the poet suddenly falls asleep. So while thinking of all these, he falls asleep with the book in his hands. The book name is Ovid's Metamorphosis. He stays there. His dream is so full of wonder. 
there no man may interpret it correctly he begins to rely his dream so he also sees a dream and i sleep so now he begins to tell us what was really he you know he could see in his dream so the boy the dreams that he wakes in a chamber with the windows of a stained glass depictions of the tale of troy and the walls painted with the story of the romance of the rose so he sees the depictions of the tale of troy troy means a powerful kingdom of the heroic age troy the trojan war we know as you know told in the homeric epic the iliad so he sees some uh, you know depiction some uh, pictures about the kingdom of troy painted there on the with the windows of stained glass glass paintings depicting the stories from the kingdom of troy and also walls on the walls he could see the stories of the romance of the rose the work he trans uh, the work chaucer translated into english the romance of the rose the french work so from that french work also he could see some paintings on the wall and on the windows window glass he could see tales from the kingdom of troy now he hears a hunt so he leaves the chamber and inquires who is hunting so in his dream he enters a chamber and after entering the chamber what happened he saw some pictures on the window then on the wall at this time he could hear a sound from outside a hunting sound from outside so he leaves the chamber and he comes out so the hunt is revealed to be that of octavian so octavian is uh, you know carrying on with a uh, hunting octavian means the first roman emperor augustus caesar so augustus caesar's another name was octavian so octavian and his group uh, you know they were hunting outside it was uh, you know a forest and uh, there was a castle a chamber and uh, chose the poet you know first entered the chamber and i watched the paintings on the window on the wall and at this time he could hear a sound from outside the hunting sound and which really you know compelled him to come out and watch what you know was happening so he sees octavian octavian hunting the dogs are released and the hunt begins so octavian's you know group they have released the dogs in order to hunt down the animals so leaving behind the poet and a small dog that the poet follows into the forest so there was a small dog near the poet and then when the dog you know also that a small dog also runs into the forest the boy to follows that dog while following the small dog the boy stumbles and it finds a knight dressed in black composing a song for the death of his lady so while you know following the dog he stumbles and he sees then he notices a knight a, bla- a black knight because he was in the night he was wearing black cloth which means the night is in mourning mourning means someone has died we don't know who so the night black night was composing a song for his dead lady the poet but knows nothing about this 
uh, he sees the knight writing something that's all so the poet asks the knight the reason for his grief the poet asks why you are sad the knight replies that he had played a game of chess with a fortune and lost his queen so the the poet i mean the knight tells the poet that he had played a game of chess so this game of chess means the game of fortune in life you know this means just a life life is taken as a game just as you know we see in chess the game of chess in a life also we have you know the play of fortune there is the indication here so fortune or fortuna defeated him which means his life i mean the fortune in the life of the black knight came to an end when his lady love died that's what the black knight tells the poet chaucer but chaucer takes it in another sense chaucer feels that the man the black knight is talking about the real game of chess but the black knight was talking about the chess of life you know the game of chess in everyone's life so in that game he is defeated that's what the black knight means but the poet takes it in a different sense so the poet takes the message literally and begs the black knight not to become upset over a game of chess so the poet chaucer consoles him by saying that it is just a game of chess so don't worry actually the knight talks about the real game that is played by fortune or fate the knight tells that for his entire life he had served a love then he saw a woman who surpassed all others so knight waited for you know his lady love his whole life and finally then he got to meet such a beautiful lady the knight speaks of her surpassing beauty and a temperament and reveals that her name was good fair white so the knight tells that this lady whose name was fair white or we can say lady white the poet is still not understanding the metaphorical chess game asks the black knight to finish the story and explain what was lost so the poet you know wants to hear the complete story because he doesn't understand it in a full sense so he wants clarification so he wants to know then what was really lost he still you know doesn't understand that the lady white the knights you know beloved is dead so lady white became the knights wife and they lived in harmony for years so the knight tells that then he married that beautiful woman and they lived happily till the narrator does not understand and asks the where about sub lady white still the poet is not capable of understanding the fact that the woman is dead the knight finally blurts out that lady white is dead so finally fed up with the poet's you know continuous uh, foolish questions the knight tells you know outright that the woman is no more the poet realizes what has occurred as the hunt ends and the party returns to a long castle so now the poet understands that the knight the black knight was talking about the death of his lady white so he was not talking about the real game of chess he was talking about the game of life or the game of fortune a fortune defeated the black knight now the army of octavian augustus caesar you know they have finished their hunting 
అనిదే ఎండ్ ద హంట్ అంటే రిటర్న్ టు ది లాంగ్ క్యాసిల్ సో హియర్ వీ సీ ద వర్డ్ లాంగ్ క్యాసిల్ విచ్ మీన్స్ లంకాస్ట్ జాన్ ఆఫ్ గౌంట్ ద డ్యూక్ ఆఫ్ లంకాస్ట్ సో లాంగ్ క్యాసిల్ ఇండికేట్స్ దిస్ now the poet awakens with his book in his hand there is always metamorphosis then he reflects on the dream and decides that the dream is really worth and it deserves to be written as a poem so after waking up from his dream and sleep the boy decides that it was a fantastic dream and it could really be the theme of his next poem so he decides to write down the poem so remember the first part of the book of the teaches talks about the poet read i mean chaucer reading the work of its metamorphosis and during the second part we see the poet falling asleep and his dream about a black knight now let's analyze the characters once more first of all we have the narrator a poet a dreamer probably chaucer himself then we have cx a king from ovid's metamorphosis then we have alcyne alcyne the queen from ovid's metamorphosis then we have the god zeus god of the sky thunder lightning etc then we have a god as juno who is the goddess of marriage then we have a morpheus god of sleep and dreams then we have a black knight in the second part we have black knight idealized version of john of gaunt black knight here symbolizes john of gaunt and we as we said the lady white symbolizes Duchess of Blanche. Lady White representation of the Duchess of Blanche. Then we have a fortune. The, you know, telling the game of chess. We have fortune, which is an allegorical representation of fortune in life, one's life. Then we have Octavian, which means Augustus Caesar, the first Roman emperor. that's all for today in the next class we will discuss the biography of the famous victorian novelist charles dickens